Good afternoon. So today's video is going to be a bit different. It's not going to be me talking that much at all. Hallelujah. It's going to be one of my friends, Dane Kelly, who's done sound on hundreds of films, TV shows, anything you could think of. He's way better at sound than I ever could be. I'm a director. I'm a DP. That's what I focus on. But Dane knows the technical side and getting good sound is really important. It is more important, arguably, than getting good images. So I'm gonna show you guys some quick clips from our Art of Documentary course with Dane talking about sound. This is actually like a two hour session we did with him, but we've condensed it down to 10 minutes. These are some of the tidbits, some of the best pieces of information from that video for you to understand how to record good sound. So let's get into this. This is how to live people. This is how to get good audio. Dane, let's start talking about actually how to mic someone. Are you going to lav me? Is I am going to lav you. Wow, this yeah. is exciting. Uh, but before we get to that, I'm okay. going to talk about some of the tools I use for okay. that. And when I, when I look at some clothing or whoever, whoever I'm going to be labbing up, yeah. I kind of assess what their outfit is. And then based on that, I'll pick the attachments and that sort of thing. So this one's like the standard one that comes with the Sennheiser G3s or G4s. Uh, and it's pretty big. Um, so when you're trying to mitigate rustle, there's a lot of surface area that's gonna be rustling here versus this one here is a Sankin, cost 11. And you can see it's like already half the size. Eliminating clothing rustle like right there, having something that's half the size is gonna help a lot. Um, but there's a lot of great attachments that also come with that Sankin Cost 11. Another great... Um, Which is like that little rubber uh, square you have there. Yes. There's a lot of, a lot of mounting options depending on your, uh, like the style of film you want to shoot. Like some people are fine just taking this, clipping it to the shirt and like... Just like, this is how I always used to do it, you know? You'd loop it through there or whatever, like yeah. that. And then you just have it on the outside. This is how I used to mic audios, but I always used to, here's what I used to do, maybe this, you can tell me you know if this is wrong, is I hated the mic sticking out. Yeah. So I would always try to like clip it to something or hide it mm -hmm. so that, draw, give me the line here, I'll draw it. This is where it would look like, you know, and put it off to the side. Right. And what is bad about this? Because <laughs> I'm just looking at Dane, looking at it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, because we don't have this plugged in, it's hard to demonstrate, but the closer you get the lav to the throat, the harder it is to make it sound good. Where you wanna have the lav mic ideally is center of the chest, right about here, cause that's gonna pick up the most, like you're gonna get a good full chest sound, okay. plus you're gonna be away from the chin enough that you're still getting the high end intelligibility parts yeah. of the voice. Cause the closer you get um, to the chin, the more uh, frequency content that well, gets. But let's say you're filming yeah. someone like me who has a t-shirt like yeah. this and I have no change of clothes. Yeah. And you have no tape. You're you're just out in the field. You have no tape. Yeah. You just have this. Where would you want me to put this? Then yeah, you, your only choice there is to go to the collar and then just make sure it's not too scratchy, and then deal with the EQ and post. But what we're saying right now, we'll get into everything else. Is this is literally the worst setup. <laughs> so that's why we want to get a thinner mic, one like this. So for this one mic, I've got all these different wow types of mounts. So these all have a different uh, advantage. The one I use the most is this one here, and it fits this specific mic. Um, it's made for it. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll when I'm setting this up, I'll have the capsule po poking out just a little bit because you don't want to cover the capsule too much. I find with this, uh, if it slides in too far, you start hearing a lot of sibilance. So like when you're saying sibilance, you hear those s Oh, it's the S. It's the yes. That's how my mom talks. Yeah. So good to see you. I'm so excited about the art of documentary. So the f the further that slides in, the harsher that is. Like mm -hmm. you can take it out in post, but and then this guy right here is a little wind cap that fits right on top of the mic. His hat. Nice little hat. So what I'll do on this, there's this. If you're cutout. outdoors. If I'm outdoors, mm -hmm. uh, or if they're inside, even running or something. Okay. Um, I w what I would do is I'd flip this mount around. Oh, cool. Stick it up, clip it on, and then just and shove it back in. And that's gonna get rid of some of the wind or, or yeah. air rushing over the capsule. 
That's going to help for sure. Because like wind rustle, you can't get rid of that. No. So if I'm on a shoot and I know we're going to be doing some inside stuff, some outside stuff, this is how I would probably set their lav on them because it's not going to cover too much of like the frequencies. Like it does cut off a little bit of the high end, but nothing that's really that noticeable. And it's going to ensure that you're going to be covered for most windy environments if it gets too windy. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll flip the arm 11 around and then just slide the cap right on. It'll clip. And then just I put it back in for safety. And then when I stick this to somebody, I'm gonna put the tape here and then put it this way onto their chest. I'd put some double-sided tape right here. Um, and then depending on how I'm miking the person up, if I'm going to somebody's skin, I'm gonna put medical tape down. And then the double-sided tape will go onto that medical tape. If I know we're gonna be filming a scene throughout the day where we're inside and outside, I'm gonna start with this right here with the wind cap on, on the arm 11. And then what I'm gonna also have is this rye coat softy on standby. Like if we do end up- it's a really windy day. Yeah, if it's really windy day, like this doesn't cut out all the wind. So what I would do, like this, this is pretty extreme, like all this fuzz. So I've got some scissors in here. I'll trim can, a little bit of that off. <laughs> You'll do a little hairstyling. Yeah. But then what I'll do is, um, if it gets too windy, I'll pull this off their chests again, put a little snot tape around the top here and around the back. And then I'll just make a little kind of cave with this that covers the whole thing. And then now you've got some extra wind protection, just like you have um, with a dead cat thing. Yeah, like exactly. So it's just mimicking that. And then this is going to give you much more wind protection. So that's usually like my last resort when I've when it's getting real windy, I'll throw one of these on. Right on my bag, I got my tape stringer. And the, I only use these two. I got snot tape and I've got my medical tape, Transpor. Uh, this is hypoallergenic. This one not as much, which is why if I'm going to the skin, I'm using this first. So for Mark, his shirt's pretty thick. I p could potentially get away with going to the shirt because what you're trying to do is mitigate rubbing and if you stick it to the thing that's going to be the loudest to rub against it to eliminate that rubbing a shirt's always going to be louder than skin unless they got a really hairy chest um, so you're saying tape it if the shirt's going to be really noisy tape it to the shirt tape it to the shirt interesting but uh, a shirt like this you're going to notice it right away which is why i'm on my chest right now this yeah. one it's because a thicker shirt it's a thicker shirt may be able to get away with it let's see Let's see. So if that's the case, I'm going to take just a little bit of snot tape, not a lot. I prefer the snot tape over like the wig tape or something like that because it's a little bit thicker. It's super stretchy uh, and it sticks a little better when you get it on. And then, so what I'll do once I have it, I'll keep this on, put the mic on, and then once I'm ready to stick it on, then I'll pull, peel this off. So before we do that, I guess we're going to, we'll go to the skin first because I think it will show up a little bit on this shirt just because there's no pattern or anything. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. You're saying a blank shirt, things will show up more, but if I'm wearing like a plaid shirt. Yeah. If somebody has got like a colorful or like patterned shirt, then you can usually get away with sticking the mic to the shirt because it's not really going to show up. Yeah. So you don't need a lot, just enough to kind of cover. And this I've also find when somebody gets sweaty, if you get the tape on before they get sweaty, it's going to stick much longer. But if they're already sweaty, then you're not going to have a good time getting it stuck on. So you might just have to go straight to the shirt. So what about having a little towel though? Like maybe a towel may not help because their pores are already going to be open. Maybe mm -hmm. an alcohol swab would help with that. But if they're already sweating and you haven't mic'd them up yet, then chances are they're just going to keep sweating. So in that case, I would just try go straight to the shirt because... Mm -hmm. It's going to eliminate that later. So we've got a piece of tape right here on Mark's chest. And I went a little bit higher on Mark's chest just for uh, the purposes of this demonstration so he doesn't have to take his shirt off. Um, but it's okay to go that high with the mic, but usually you're going to have the best sound when it's a little bit further down, like a couple inches further down. So I have a little bit of hair on my chest. Yeah. Just a little bit. And um, would I put 
could you put medical tape over top of that? Because mm-hmm. I know one time I mic someone and I put one of those rye coats and they were like, like it was the most yeah. painful thing ever for them. Yeah, sometimes, like it, it really depends. I hate miking to the chest, especially if uh, someone has a very hairy chest. But sometimes it's the only place to put it and I always apologize first and um, I'll ask them if they prefer to rip it off or if they want me to at the yeah, end. But, yeah. um, there are ways to avoid that if you are going to the chest. But yeah, now I'll just stick this right to that medical tape, press it on nice and tight, and that right there should be pretty good. But I'll always put another safety piece o- over top. Always make sure not to cover the top of the mic. Keep this open. It's the most important part. Three pieces of tape here. So what I would do after that, sometimes I'll put another piece of tape on the cable just so that the cable doesn't get pulled out. But another way to mitigate that is to put a little bit of slack here and run the cable down the side. And then that way you don't have a line straight down the front of the shirt, but it actually goes underneath the chest. And then this kind of relieves some slack and it gives me the ability to move around without the need of like, without feeling like the cable's being pulled off my chest. So we have a third channel. Yes. Put my hand over top. You can hear the different audio. My hand is in front of it. This is like if I had a thick shirt on. This is with the hand off. Oh, that'd be a really thick shirt. It'd be a really thick shirt. Um, and we're in Canada, man. We wear jackets. Yeah. So why don't right now, I'm going to just talk for a quick sec. Dane's going to show you the difference now between the lav mic. That's what you're hearing right now. You're hearing lav mic. This is me talking with the lav mic. But now let's switch over to the boom mic. Now you're hearing the boom mic. This is Mark Bowen, and I'm talking to you guys on the Art of Documentary. So you can begin to hear what, what would people be hearing right now between those two things. Right now, we're still in the boom mic. Yeah. They're hearing a more kind of fuller sound? It's a fuller sound for sure. You're gonna hear a little bit more of the space, but it's gonna give you like a little bit more perspective of like the room, type of room you're in, mm-hmm. which uh, I prefer. I like giving some of that perspective because the lav sometimes can be super tight. Yeah, where um, really with the lav, it's it's like the, you're only hearing what's kind of in this localized area. Yeah, right? and yeah. It, it can be a bit less consistent, especially if you're like, move your head off yeah, to I the side or come back. Or like someone like Mark or other people who talk with their hands a lot, you can mm-hmm. hear right now, like my mic is kind of phasing because my voice is bouncing off my hands or if they like hit their chest or something, uh, you're safe from all of that stuff if you've got the boom above you. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I actually go back to that video all the time to see how to lab people properly. That was Dane, Dane's legend. And uh, if you enjoyed that video, go sign up for our wait list. Art of Documentary is closed, but we'll be reopening in September. This course is over 60 videos with information like that from professionals in the industry, not just YouTubers, people who are doing what they are passionate about in the industry on films. It's taught by me and Michael, my creative partner, Michael's directed over five feature length films. We've directed other films together, so go check it out. We're trying to give you guys the best information possible and not just lies that say, here's three steps to be a videographer. I mean, those steps could work, but we're trying to give you how to create films, compelling stories, and also there's some technical stuff that you need to know along the side, just like Dane. So go check that out, jump on the wait list, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.